where it needs to be. Uh, not flexing there like it was. Like it Welcome back to IP Farms. Well, it's another blistering day here in North Carolina, but we are in the shade under the lean-to, and that's a blessing in itself. Um, the oat patch I said in the last video, I think, or one of the last ones, I wasn't sure if we were going to get to run the combine through it, and I'm still not, but I'm going to do everything I possibly can. Um, swung for the fences on something with them. I did last week. We'll see how that's working out. Uh, they're pretty much past any kind of use but I'm hoping just to kind of get an idea of how the combine is going to do, get a feel for it myself. We talked about all that. So today we're going to try to tear into it and see if I can figure out how to set it up. Um, scream into the <laughs> screen, drop it in the comments, whatever. I'm sure I'm going to mess it all up. We're going to give it the best shot we can. I do have a book and I've been reading that a little bit. I'm not sure how much I'm comprehending, but bring it along for as much as I can. If for some reason the audio gets bad, I have to do a voiceover because of the fan. We will, but uh, it's hot. So let's get started. All right, guys, um, we're gonna try to open up the covers here on the feeder house and see if I can look in there and have any idea what I'm looking at. Uh, specifies a few things in the book. So I gotta clean a bunch of old dust and debris and chafe and stuff like that out of there. And uh, just noticed <laughs> just now that another snake skin. Thought we left him down there at the uh, Bruce Brothers. But anyway, uh, let's get started and see what we can do. Well, I definitely see a bunch of uh, bean residue in there. Also see a new baron over there, that's nice. Okay, so I assume that is the cylinder, I think. These bars, I've got some extra ones of those. I think it said something in the book about putting more bars on the cylinder for better thrashing for smaller grain. I don't know, I'm sure you guys are gonna yell at me, but let me get a little bit of this uh, Residue cleaned out so we don't see Mr. Snake in there and see what I can come up with. Right, guys i think we're gonna call it a day uh i know a lot more about the inner workings of a gleaner combine than i did before um still got to do some figuring on the amount of cylinder bars and what those other bars are that i got with it um sprockets uh, we've got a great big one which i haven't 
I see some ranges in the charts, but I um, haven't figured out exactly what that is. I know this one, the 44 tooth, will do corn and soybeans, uh, 850 and 500 high and low. And for normal circumstances with oats and wheat, you would do uh, the 28 tooth, which is 813.25. So I think as dry as mine are, what I've been told uh, it needs to slow down anyway, just to get an idea. So we'll requisition a new sprocket before uh, next spring with the wheat. So let me show you one more thing and uh, I'm gonna call it a day. Here's one problem that I encountered. Um, I think they call these snubbers. And they're like little rubber bushings for this. Uh, if you can see that play there. But uh, I noticed this belt had some squealing, which they do the design of it. It runs all the time, just takes tension off of it for the unload auger. But uh, we got those on order from Oakley, so they should be here in a couple of days. I've got to do something about the gas tank. I'm not sure if I'm going to chance that one uh, on our maiden voyage uh, and put two fuel filters on it, or if I'm just going to put the boat tank up here out of the F600, give me a little bit more. I don't think my little gallon jug will last me enough gas to even get out the front field. But uh, we're close guys. I mean, uh, we got to do the, what do you call that sieve adjustment and fan speed and all that. Um, but, uh, we'll see what happens. So keep your fingers crossed and I'll uh, bring you back for another day. All right. Well, we're back for another day. Um, my buddy's here. I'm trying to see if I can get this unit out and get the header back on it and possibly put it in the lower side of the lean to down here. We're going to try it. So I thought I'd bring you along for another ride in Glenda. Ready? Let's hope there's not one. Let's hope that black snake isn't in here. Or his mama or daddy or something. As long as it's not a copperhead, we'll be fine. I can see right now one thing I'm gonna make sure of when I get done with the combine every year and let's clean it out. <clears throat> I think we all are guilty of probably putting off something until the next time and then the next time never comes. But boy, this old bean stubble and stuff. I don't know how old it is, probably years. Sure wreaking havoc on my sinuses. But we're getting there. Yes, I could crank it up and do this, but what fun would that be? All right, guys, before my sinuses get too bad, we can't even understand me. Um, this is what I was talking about with the oats. Um, not sure if we were going to be able to combine them or not. Not that Glenda needed anything major. I mean, a few odds and ends here or there, but it's just time doing everything else, cleaning everything out. Uh, how do you say it? The sieves in the back, they are crammed full of soybean stubble. I mean, completely full. And I guess it's probably 15 plus years and it's hard as a rock. So I'm going to have to basically go through each one of those and pull that out. So I've got a day's worth of cleaning there. But the oats are way past uh, ripe, so it's not really going to be any kind of harvest other than just, you know, running the combine through them if we get to. Um, might get a few seeds in here, we'll see what happens. But, you know, that's the way the cookie crumbles, but we're a whole lot closer to uh, row crops than we were last year this time. So we're going to keep digging and hopefully we can uh, get the old girl out there in the field and see what happens. So let me finish cleaning up here and I'll bring you back for something else here in a minute. Oh, Lord. That's a ways down. Yeah, it looked like a man would uh, have him a ladder right up here to the side instead of trying to climb over everything. Yeah, you know how I do everything. It's always the cart before the horse. Always. Now I'm in here and I gotta get back out. Oh, Lord. Oh, 
Oh, yep, that's the lean-to, Nelson. Oh, Lord. Oh, goodness. Well, that was... Oh, let me catch some breath, if you know what I mean. Oh, that didn't go as well as planned. The things I do. Clouds aren't looking too good. We had a horrendous storm roll through yesterday. Lots of rain, which we needed that. We didn't need the high wind. Haven't even been out there the oats to see if it blew all the seeds off. They were fragile as all get out as it was. But we're gonna try to finish up a few things. It's been about a week and a half to two weeks since I've been up here uh, working on the combine. We have gotta see if we can get the head locked up rigid, uh, put the rasp bars back in, um, finish up on the hydraulic filter. I got that in from Oakley's and then figure out what I'm gonna do about a gas tank and probably gonna just try to rig the boat tank up to send the dump truck for right now so I can get out there and get these things ran through the combine see how it goes and uh, move on to the next step in the journey i guess we'll say so get you a few clips today and we'll see what happens it really looks like a man would have put these rasp bars back in before he put the header on well let's just say i forgot <laughs> so now i get to fight standing in there when i could just stand right in front of the feeder house before and uh put them in but anyway uh i was told to clean them up with a wire wheel i'm not going to go to that extreme i should but we're running out of time might do that they're not bad they just got some dust on them they're not rusty really uh, so in case any of you want to know um these take seven sixteenths bolts i bought three eighths to begin with thinking that's what it was naturally they're seven sixteenths that's kind of a well, I won't say a rarity, but you don't see 7 16 bolts as much. So I got 7 16 by 1 inch with lock washers and stuff. So in case any of you are wondering, let me get these cleaned up. Uh, I'm, sorry, dust and debris out of them and uh, see if we can get these bolted back in. I don't know how well you can hear me guys with air compressor running in the background, but I'm just putting the bolts in. Like I said, it's been a lot easier with the head off, but somebody forgot it. Anyway, the orientation's uh, specific, the way the open and close end of the rasp bars are, it's in the book. So we're gonna get all these uh, bars put in, tightened up, and put the cover back on, put the trap door up, the concaves, and we're gonna call the feeder house good. I gotta put the chain on on the other side. Uh, for the header itself move on to something else so i'll bring you back soon all right guys we're back for another day um i got way ahead of myself here went ahead and pulled everything loose before i turned the camera on um so here's how basically it orientates this sits goes in just like so um this goes up in there got this o-ring which is bad it's got a bad place in it so uh, that was definitely probably the leak and uh we got two new well, i got I got a new filter. I went ahead and got two of them. Um, I'll put the link in the description for that. I'll show you the box right here right quick. If you can see that. Got these from Oakley's Combine here in North Carolina. Um, if any of you guys are needing anything, definitely give them a call. Uh, super nice guys. Uh, I talked to Gabe and Jamie both, and they were amazing to deal with, honestly. Um, the snubbers. I got first, Gabe helped me with those, and then called back, he was on vacation, Jamie got me these filters. So I'm gonna put the new filter O-ring in, get this buttoned up, and we'll move on to the snubbers on the crank pulley. I'll we'll try to get you a couple of shots here, something the size of my hands, but I broke all the bolts loose. They're not this loose to begin with, but I assume we just pull this out, this bolt out, and that sleeve should still be in there. The rubber's just gone. Um, Oh look, you get nothing but my hand. <sighs> Camera angles are tough at times, guys. Well, I thought I'd do a comparison right quick. I'm not sure if these are original equipment or if they've been changed before, but definitely worse for wear down to the metal bush in there on that one. Um, all the rubber's gone, of course. It was making a chattering back here. I thought it was just a belt, but it makes sense now what it is. So you can see those compared to the new ones. Um, they're the same size front and back. So see if I can get these back in there and get it bolted up and uh, we'll move on to the next project. 
Well, it wasn't as easy to try to get that shaft out as I thought it was going to be. So we ended up just uh, making do. You can see I'm trying to wiggle it now, nothing. I ended up just putting a little uh, grease on these and squeezing them in with pliers and bolting it back up. So it wasn't too awful bad at all. So, well, it's not perfect. Uh, I've got one basically leaf spring that's broken on the far side of the, the gearbox. So that side's sagging a little bit more than the rest of them, but um, pretty much locked up where it needs to be. Uh, not flexing there like it was. Like I said, that corner's a little bit low. It'll get me by. Gotta make a trip to Oakley's, I guess, if I can find one of these heads down there and get a spring off of it. So, all right, guys, well, I think we're gonna uh, probably call this one good. Let me get situated here and we'll say a few things. And uh, next one, hopefully you see on Glenda will be out in the oats. Well, hopefully you enjoyed it guys we're gonna say barn hibernation probably 14 15 years back out into the field because that's the next place she is going uh i've got to put the gas tank on it do a little vacuuming in the inside clean out the unload auger um and i believe that's it so today's thursday uh, we've got torrential rain today it may be a little wet saturday we'll have to go out there and see there's not hardly anything left of the oats we've already talked about that in several videos so don't make fun when we do but this combine is going through what i planted here at ip farms um Really appreciate all the support, you guys. Uh, thank you for that. You know, some people wonder why I do this. You know, pennies on the dollar, that's my slogan, of course. Um, you know, this is a good little combine. It'll suit me perfect for my needs here. I mean, it would be wonderful to have air conditioning and, you know, radio and not be dusty and dirty or whatever else. But, you know, at some point in time, probably in the near future, this combine might have ended up melted down in the scrapyard somewhere. And uh, there's just no need in it. Still, still got a lot of life left for people like me. So. There's a place for everything and, uh, you know, proud to get it here like I did with the, you know, trailer build and, and my service truck that we worked on and all that. So I enjoy doing what I'm doing. Hopefully you guys will continue to enjoy following along the journey with me. We are going to be all out farming at some point. Uh, don't know that I'll ever make it big or make big money at it, but uh, we're going to enjoy ourselves nonetheless. So if any of you are interested in any uh, apparel, merchandise, whatever, hats, shirts, decals, I'll put a link in the description to uh, IP Farms Mad Moose Designs. Go check them out. Um, and really appreciate everything you guys do, uh, new subscribers, old subscribers, you know, I love to, to hear the comments back and forth, have a conversation with you guys. So hopefully you'll continue to follow along the journey with me as, uh, by all nears, we're, we're definitely going to put some seed in the ground this year. So we'll see what happens over the next couple of days until then. Thank you.